Right. Let's take this question now. Find the Fourier series expansion of f of x is equals to x square plus x. And look at the interval simultaneously. You are given x varies in between minus pi and plus pi. Okay. Now for these values of x, let us try to find out what you call the Fourier series expansion. So I'm just writing everything clearly for your com comfort uh, solution. Right. See, when you are given certain function, here in this case it is x square plus x, but this idea works for any other function also. Okay. Now see the Fourier series expansion of f of x can be written like this, as you had seen already, a naught by two plus we can write it like this summation from n is equals to one to infinity a n cos n x plus b n sin n x. Right now the problem here is to calculate these three Fourier coefficients a naught, a n and b n. Now see what is actually a naught. I'm just writing the formula once for your convenience. Here a naught can be calculated from this formula one by pi into integration from see what is the interval of definition here x varies from minus pi to plus pi. That's how the limits of this integral, you know, they are from minus pi to pi. Uh, whatever the function you are given, you just integrate that f of x dx. Then to calculate a n, the second coefficient, you know, always remember you cannot take b n to sin n x and uh, a n to cos n x, right? A n's are always coefficients of cosine functions and b n's are, you know, uh, what you call coefficients of sine functions, right? That's how uh, we defined, you know, we, we, have, we have developed all these integral formulae, right? Euler's Euler's you know, formula for Fourier coefficients, a n, one by pi into integration from minus pi to pi. Uh, this time you see, as I told you just now, you see a n are the coefficients of cos n x, that cos n x comes here in the integral as well, f of x into cos n x. Then you need to calculate b n. So for b n, you know, the same thing, integration from minus pi to pi, f of x into, you know, as I told you just now, bn's are the coefficients of sin and x, right? That sin and x comes, uh, you know, in, in this, while evaluating bn. Now, see, these are the three formula we are using to calculate uh, what you call that, uh, what you call those Fourier coefficients. You know, let's use one after them, one after the other, you know, to calculate these three. Uh, first of all, I'm calculating what you call a naught. Consider, uh, if I take it like this, a naught is equals to, 1 by pi integration from minus pi to pi. See the function I'm taking as it is x square plus x dx. See, I'm using this formula to calculate a naught. So it is f of x into dx, right? We know we are already much familiar with these kind of integrals. So I'm just evaluating the integral here. You see, when you integrate x square, as we know, it is x cubed by 3. Plus, when we integrate x, it is x square by 2 with the limits from minus pi to pi. I hope you remember we need to substitute the limits to you know, simplify this integral. Uh, first we know we need, we need to substitute what you call the upper limit and then we take the lower limit. So it is equals to one by pi. I'm just writing it as it is. Look at it, how I'm writing it. I'm taking a flower brace uh, to separate what you call the upper limit and lower limit values. So now, first of all, I'm substituting the upper limit pi. So when you substitute x is equals to pi, it becomes, you know, pi cube by three plus pi square by two. Then you see minus, now I'm substituting the lower limit. Now the lower limit is, you see, it is minus pi. When you substitute x is equals to minus pi, it becomes minus pi whole cube, which is minus pi cube divided by three. Then plus, when you substitute x is equals to pi here, it becomes minus pi whole square, you know, so it is pi square by two. And I'm see, I'm closing this flower press. So when I write like this, you see, there won't be any confusion in our further simplifications. Then it is equals to one by pi times. Oh, see, how can we simplify it? I'm writing all the terms separately. Pi cube by three. I think we can write it directly also. Oh, see here, this is one pi cube by three. And here, there is one more pi cube by three. In fact, if you add these two, see, here is a minus sign and there is a minus sign out of this. When you multiply these two minus signs, you know, it becomes plus pi cube by three. So pi cube by three, and here also it is pi cube by three. When you add those two, we'll get the sum as two pi cube by three. Fine, that's one thing. And if you look at the other two terms here, uh, one point here it is plus pi square by two, 
and you are multiplying this minus sign with this plus sign here you see here you have plus pi square by 2 and when you multiply it's uh, you know minus sign we'll get this as also minus uh, you know pi square by 2 but with a negative sign see here we have plus pi square by 2 and after multiplication here we have minus pi square by 2 when you add those two you know we'll get the sum as, sum as zero that's how we'll get this result i mean sum of all these values has only this much 2 pi cube by 3 so this implies you know when you cancel one pi here one pi can be cancelled and after cancellation we'll get a naught as simply 2 pi square by 3 right that's a naught now let us calculate what you call a n we must be a little careful so that we can calculate them quite easily a n is equals to see i'm just using the formula again 1 by pi into integration from minus pi to pi it is f of x into cos n x. What is f of x? x square plus x into, I'm just substituting, you know, cos n x dx. See, uh, if somebody feels, you know, direct evaluation of this integral is difficult. If you feel that this product is difficult, you can actually split this into two integrals. Like, you know, we can write as x square cos n x plus x into cos n x. Uh, but see, when you split it into two different integrals, you know, the problem becomes too lengthy. Instead, you can directly continue it. Uh, if you recall, you know, we did this even in our previous question. When you have a product of two different functions, we can use, you know, integration by parts. And particularly, if you use the updated, uh, what you call this integration by parts, improved by parts formula uh, proposed by Leibniz, when you have one of these functions in the product as an algebraic expression, when one of the functions in this product, uh, uh, when you have them uh, as what you call this algebraic expression, then we can use Leibniz idea and see, I'm just using that. To evaluate this product, to integrate this product, see, I'm proceeding like this. Initially, I'm writing the first function as it is. Right, I'm writing this first function as it is. And then I'm integrating the second function. When we integrate cos nx, see, we'll get it as sin nx divided by n. Fine, then minus from the second term onwards, you know, anyway, we'll alternately take plus minus signs. And then from the second term onwards, we'll always differentiate the first function and but integrate the second function, right? We'll always differentiate the first function, but we integrate the second function. So when you differentiate x square plus x, what happens here? 2x plus 1 into, we need to integrate this sin nx by n. In fact, you know, when we integrate sin nx, we'll get it as minus cos nx by n, right? This is what you get when you integrate only sin nx. But see, already there is one n here. So you need to multiply that n also here. So it becomes n square. Right? See, for the first term, we took it as positive. Then for the second term, we, get, we took it as negative. Now again, for the third term, we take it as plus. Now see here, this is the first function. We need to differentiate that. When you differentiate this first function, you know, we'll get it as only 2. Right? Then we need to integrate the second function minus cos nx by n square. When you integrate that, that minus sign, it remains as it is. And when you integrate this sin nx, we'll get it as, uh, sorry, when we integrate this cos nx, we'll get it as what you call sin nx divided by n. But already there is an n square, you know, because of that n square into this n, it becomes n cube, right? Uh, next to this c, actually we need to take it as minus. Uh, we need to still differentiate this first function. But since it is a constant, when you differentiate it for the next time, we'll get it as anyway zero. Because not only the next term, even the remaining terms are also zeros only. When we differentiate zero for multiple times, every time we'll get it as zero only. That's how, anyway, the remaining terms are negative. Since the remaining terms are negatives, uh, I'm sorry, since the remaining terms are simply zeros, I'm not writing the remaining terms. I'm just stopping here itself with this term, right? So here I can stop and the limits are from minus pi to pi. Fine. Uh, let's see one more thing carefully. This is much important, uh, you know, thing to understand before proceeding uh, in our further problems. Look at what kind of terms you have in this integral. It's a kind of shortcut what we use very frequently in Fourier series, especially. See what term, what kind of terms you have in all these, uh, what kind of functions you have in all these terms. Here you see we have sine nx. Here it is cos nx. Here also you see we have the same thing sine nx. We have one simple idea when it is sin n pi or sin 2n pi, definitely their values are simply zeros. 
right? When you substitute the limits, we'll get those functions as either sine n pi or sine two n pi, isn't it? Those kind of things. When you get such functions, definitely their values are zeros. So you can understand here what are the limits. They are, you know, pi and minus pi. When you substitute upper limit pi, we'll get this as sine n pi, so that this function value will be zero. I mean, the term becomes completely zero. Not only for the upper limit, even if you substitute the lower limit, uh, what what happens to this? See, sine n into minus pi. So we can also write as sine of minus n pi, right? Right? Uh, because sine is an odd function, because sine is an odd function, sine of minus x can be written as minus sine n x, or else minus sine x. So here it becomes minus sine n pi. Hey, don't worry about the sine. Already we know the value of sine n pi is zero, isn't it? So when you have sine n x here, whether it is for pi or minus pi, these two function values become zero. Right? It's clear. Understand? Because the limits are pi and minus pi, even when it is zero, also the same thing happens. Remember, when you have zero to two pi, for example, if the interval of definition is from zero to two pi, even in that case, when you substitute the upper limit two pi, it becomes a sine two n pi. You know, so zero. When you substitute even x is equal to zero, lower limit, let us say, right? When you take x is equal to zero, it becomes a sine zero. Even the value of sine zero is also zero. So keeping this idea in mind, you can just proceed further. Because anyway, we'll get these two. Uh, I mean, because we'll get these two terms as zeros for both upper limit as well as the lower limit. We can simply ignore them, right? We can simply ignore them because their values will be zeros after substituting the limits, right? So keeping that idea in mind, I'm simply writing this as you see. I'm writing it like this. You see, I'm I'm simply not writing the first and last terms, but I'm only writing the second term. Uh, but then, what about this value? What about this term? When you substitute x is equals to pi, it becomes actually cos n pi. One thing is for sure, cos n pi value is not zero. So I need to consider that. So look at these two terms carefully. We have minus here, and there is a minus inside also. When you multiply those two, we'll get it as two x plus one into Cos n x divided by n square with the limits from minus pi to pi. I have not yet substituted the limits, but even after substitutions, certainly we are aware these two terms. You know, sin n x, the terms involving sin n x become zero, right? So keeping that idea in mind, I am writing only this term, ignoring the remaining terms. Now let us see what happens when you substitute the limits. It is equals to. Uh, see, I am first substituting what you call the upper limit. When you substitute the upper limit, we'll get it like this: two pi x is equals to pi. I'm substituting. You see, two pi plus one into cos n pi by n square. This is what you get when you substitute the upper limit. Minus, minus. Now see, you are substituting x is equals to minus pi, lower limit. So it is minus two pi plus one into ah. Uh, what happens here? You see, cos in place of x you are substituting minus pi. So it becomes cos of minus n pi divided by n square. That's it. Uh, now again, understand what is the value of cos n pi. I hope you remember the value of cos n pi is minus one to the power of n, right? So the value of cos n pi is. Minus one to the power of n. Not only that, you see, when it is cos of minus x in general, when it is cos of minus x, as you know, cos is an even function, so that f of minus x can be written as plus f of x. I mean, cos of minus x becomes what you call cos x only. So whether it is cos n pi or cos of minus n pi, even cos of minus n pi can also be written as cos n pi only. So that the values of these two terms, either cos n pi. Or cos of minus n pi, both become minus one to the power of n only, right? So keeping that idea in mind, you see, I'm writing it in the next slide. So what you have there, it is equals to therefore, a n is equals to. Uh, we have these things. You see, two pi plus one into minus one to the power of n divided by n square. 
right? 2 pi plus 1 into instead of cos n pi, I have written it as minus 1 bar n minus here also the same thing, you know, minus minus 2 pi plus 1 into minus 1 to the power of n divided by n square, right? Let me be very clear. I've, I've ignored some terms here because sin n pi is equals to 0. This is one idea. And here the value of cos n pi is minus 1 to the power of n. So this is since cos n pi is equals to minus 1 to the power of n. Fine. Now let me simplify this. Therefore, a n is equals to uh, one thing you see we can take minus 1 to the power of n by n square common from these two terms. So it is minus 1 to the power of n divided by n square into uh, what kind of terms you'll get here 2 pi plus n and see you can multiply these two minus of minus it is 2 pi and minus into plus minus 1. Right. So one can be cancelled here. So what remains you see something I forget. Uh, I forget to write 1 by pi you see everywhere. You should tell me. So we have 1 by pi here and even here also it is 1 by pi. See it is there everywhere. In fact, here also the same thing comes. So an is equals to 1 by pi into. Now see here you'll get 1 by pi. Uh, now see if you simplify this, we'll get it as 1 by pi into minus 1 to the power of n by n square into 4 pi. So this pi can be cancelled, you know, from there we can write a n is equal to after cancelling this pi, it is minus 1 to the power of n into 4 by n square. Right, so this is a n. Now let me just calculate what you call b n in Right. See here now again I'm writing bn is equals to 1 by pi into integration from minus pi to pi. Uh, what you call it is f of x into sin and x dx. Right? f of x into sin and x dx. See how, how I am continuing this 1 by pi into integration from minus pi to pi. Uh, let me just substitute already we have written the formula right. So here it is x square plus x. Now, see in a very similar way, I'm just evaluating this integral using Leibniz's idea. So, 1 by pi times, uh, first of all, you see, I'm just keeping this first term as it is, x squared plus x into, when we integrate this sine nx, we'll get it as minus cos nx divided by n. Then see minus, I'm differentiating the first function. When we differentiate it, you know, we'll get it as simply 2x plus 1, right? Uh, into, when we integrate this minus cos nx, See, it is minus integration of cos nx, you know, sin nx divided by n. But here there is already one n, so it becomes n square. Then see plus. Uh, now when we differentiate this 2x plus 1, we'll get it as 2. And when we integrate this sin nx, see, we'll get it as, already here is a minus, you know, that's why we'll get it as plus cos nx divided by n cube. Right? So here the limits are from minus pi to plus pi. Fine. Now, uh, again, see here also the similar story. When you substitute either of these two limits, I mean plus pi or minus pi, for both this second term here, now see sin nx is there in the second term here. Because of this function sin nx, for both the values of upper limit and lower limit, this sin nx becomes zero. Correct? I mean sin n pi, uh, sin n pi is zero, this term becomes zero. So I can simply ignore the second term, but I can substitute only uh, these values in the remaining two terms. Anyway, I'm just saying, since it is only one term, I'm just continuing quite easily. It is then 1 by pi times, uh, when you substitute the upper limit, see, x is equal to pi, uh, we'll get it like this, you see. Here is a minus sign, you know, I'm just writing that minus sign first, minus, uh, what it is, pi square plus pi into, uh, what you'll get here, you see, cos n pi divided by n. Right? 
when I substitute x is equal to pi, this is the first term. Then minus, uh, in fact, you know, any we substitute x is equal to pi because of this sign n pi, it is anyway zero. So without wasting our time, let me take it as directly zero. Then plus, uh, we have one more term there. When you substitute now x is equal to pi here, it becomes two into cos n pi divided by n cube. Right, see, we'll get this as what you call the upper limit. Fine, now minus, I'm taking now the lower limit. Understand we are now substituting x is equal to minus pi. So when you substitute x is equal to minus pi, uh, again, see here also we have a minus sign, minus of, even if, even uh, when you substitute x is equal to minus pi because of x square, it becomes pi square only. But here in the second term, when you substitute x is equal to minus pi, you'll get this pi square minus pi into, uh, here you see again the same story. Even if you substitute x is equal to minus pi, look at it carefully. Even if you substitute x is equal to minus pi, when you take x is equal to minus pi, actually it is cos of minus n pi, right? It is actually cos of minus n pi, but because cos is an even function, cos of minus x can be written as cos x. So it becomes cos n pi only, right? Divided by this n, right? Again, the second term is zero. So I'm taking it as directly zero plus two times, you know, again, the same idea, you know, when you take x is equal to minus pi, even after taking x is equal to minus pi, as we know, cos minus cos of minus n pi becomes cos n pi only because cos is an even function divided by n cube. Right? Let us simplify this now. It is equals to 1 by pi into. Uh, uh, see, I'm just trying to write it directly. From these two terms, you know, look at these two. From these two terms, we can take cos n pi by n common. And what is the value of cos n pi simultaneously? It is minus one to the power of n divided by n into, uh, when I take these two terms common, when I take this term common from these two, uh, what terms you'll get there? Minus pi square minus pi. I'm just multiplying this minus n here, minus pi square minus pi. Then from the other term, already here is a minus sign. Look at this. Because of that minus sign, you know, minus and this minus here. When you multiply them, it becomes, I mean, the product becomes plus, and hence, you know, we'll get it like this, pi square minus pi. Right, I took this cos n pi by n common, and the value of cos n pi is minus 1 power n. And if you write the remaining terms, you know, we got it like this. Fine. Now, if you look at the other two terms, what you have here? 2 cos n pi by pi cube minus the same thing, you know, we have the same thing. So it is also two cos n pi by n cube. In fact, we can directly cancel them, but anyway, I'm writing them for your comfort. comfort. One by n, one by pi into, uh, here it is minus one to the power of n by n. See, we have canceled these two. Then we can also cancel pi square here. So what remains? Minus two pi. And that pi can also be canceled here, you see. Therefore, we'll get it as minus 1 to the power of n into minus 1 by n. Right? See, I have cancelled this pi and the 2 remains here. So it is minus 2 divided by n. Right? This minus 1 to the power of n I have written as it is and this minus 2 divided by n. So this is the value of bn. Therefore, if you write the Fourier series, therefore, the Fourier series finally the Fourier series of f of x is equals to x square plus x. You know, this is a function what you have considered is uh, x square plus x is equals to, I'm just substituting all the values. You see, a naught by 2, 1 by 2 times, see how much is a naught? We got it as 2 pi square by 3. I'm substituting that here. 2 pi square by 3 uh, plus summation n is equals to 1 to infinity. Uh, how much it is? a n cos n x. See how much we got a n? It is minus 1 to the power of n into 4 by n square a n into cos n x. Fine. Plus b n. How much we got? You see b1. b n it is minus 1 to the power of n into minus 2 by n. This multiplied by, you know, sin n x. So a naught by 2 plus summation a n cos n x plus b n sin n x. That's a series and I'm just simplifying this. So this is equal to so 2 can be cancelled here. So we'll get it as pi square by 3 plus 
summation n is equals to 1 to infinity i'm just writing it again for your convenience minus 1 to the power of n into 4 by n square times cos n x and here you see we have a minus sign you know minus into that plus it is minus minus 1 to the power of n into 2 by n right because you know we have already written that minus n before but this minus 1 to the power of n into 2 by n sin n x so this is the Fourier series expansion of x square plus x fine right look at this question now find the Fourier series expansion of f of x is equal to e power x and now see uh, x varies from 0 to 2 pi right that is very important uh, you know we have uh, we need to think of this the length of this interval must be always 2 pi right uh, now keeping that in mind i'm just proceeding further to continue this uh, so the Fourier series expansion i'm writing it for convenience is f of x is equals to a naught by 2 plus summation a n cos n x plus b n sin n x right anyway summation takes values from 1 to infinity and what is uh, a naught here a naught can be calculated from this idea you know 1 by pi into integration from 0 to 2 pi this time look at it because the interval of definition is uh, from 0 to 2 pi i'm also taking the limits of this integral as from 0 to 2 pi f of x dx right so this is equals to i'm just substituting you know i'm calculating you know directly here itself integration from 0 to 2 pi and the function what you are given is e power x dx i hope you remember when you integrate e power x we'll get it as e power x only correct so i'm just continuing that so this is equals to 1 by pi into when you integrate e power x it is e power x with the limits from 0 to 2 pi so when you substitute the limit see what happens 1 by pi into when you when you take the upper limit x is equals to 2 pi it is e to the power of 2 pi minus if you take x is equals to 0 it becomes e power 0 right e power 0 is simply 1 right so this is what you will get as a naught now therefore let me now calculate a n let's keep that aside and now calculate a n a n is equals to as we know it is 1 by pi times integration from 0 to 2 pi f of x into cos nx f of x into cos nx dx now let me substitute f of x is equal to e power x in this function and see how much you'll get 1 by pi into integration from 0 to 2 pi e power x into cos nx now see again this is also a, a kind of product of two different functions but we cannot use directly what you call uh, you know integration by parts formula right we need to we need to use some other formula i hope you, some of you remember this and it is this i'm just using i'm writing that formula for you integration of e power ax into cos bx is equals to uh, it can be written like this e to the power of ax divided by a square plus b square multiplied by a cos bx plus b sine bx right the formula which you have studied earlier now we need to use this formula to evaluate you know this kind of integral right i'm just using this formula here you see therefore a n is equals to i'm writing that one by pi as it is and then when i integrate this product using this formula when you compare these two you know a is equals to one and b is equals to what you call n so keeping that in mind you know when you integrate that product we'll get it as e power x divided by e power x divided by a square means 1 square plus b square means n square right i'm just substituting a is equals to 1 and b is equals to n right uh, this multiplied by a cos bx so it is 1 into cos nx cos nx plus b means n only right so i'm taking it as n sin nx right so the limits are from 0 to 2 pi so this is equals to uh, keeping this one by pi aside. Uh, now let me substitute the limits carefully. First of all, I'm substituting what you call this upper limit. So when you substitute the upper limit, x is equal to 2 pi, it becomes e to the power of 2 pi divided by 1 plus n square multiplied by, uh, see here also I'm substituting x is equal to 2 pi. So it becomes cos 2n pi 
plus n into sine to n pi. This is for upper limit. Minus. Now I am taking the lower limit x is equals to zero, so it becomes e power zero, right? So it is one divided by one plus n square into. Again, here also I am taking x is equal to zero, so it becomes cos zero plus n into sine zero. Right. So that's how you can substitute the limits, and it is equals to one by pi times. Uh, see what I am trying to do here. Uh, e power two pi by one plus n square. Into uh, how much these are these values? Cos two n pi is strictly one plus sine two n pi is anyway zero. So within the bracket here we'll get it as one plus zero, right? So I'm not writing anything there. Minus uh, here also when you take cos zero before that you see we have one by one plus n square multiplied by cos zero is one and sine zero is anyway zero. So that within these brackets you see we'll get it as only one. So I'm not writing anything. Let it be like this, right? Uh, we can take you know one plus one by one plus n square common from these two terms. So therefore, we'll get a n is equals to one by pi. Let it let it be like this: one by pi, and we are taking one by one plus n square common from this, and the remaining is e to the power of two pi minus one. So that's how we will get what you call the value of a n. Now let me calculate the value of b n similarly. Again, you see, consider p n is equals to one by pi times integration from zero to two pi. See the formula is f of x into sine n x dx. So this is equals to one by pi times. I'm just substituting, you know, integration from zero to two pi. Uh, the function is now e power x, e power x into sine n x dx. Right. Uh, see how much is uh, this product? I hope you remember this formula. Also, I'm writing it for your convenience. Integration of e power a x into sine b x. When you have, you know, this product, the formula says it is equals to e to the power of a x divided by a square plus b square multiplied by, you know, we'll get these things a into sine b x minus b into cos b x. You know, this formula we know we are popularly aware of these kind of formulae. So I'm writing it directly. Now let us use this simple formula to evaluate this product. I mean the integration of that product. So therefore, you know, b n is equals to. It is one by pi times. I'm using this simple formula. You see nothing else. Now if you if you compare these two, now we have a is equals to one, and again b is also equal to n. So keeping that in mind, I'm writing it directly. E power a e power x divided by a square plus b square one plus I mean one square plus n square. Fine. Into a sine b x, so one into sine b x means sine n x minus b means n into cos n x. So this is the formula, and now here I am substituting the limits from zero to two pi. Right, fine. Let us substitute the limits one by pi into. Uh, first of all, you see you are taking the upper limit x is equals to two pi, so we'll get it as e to the power of two pi divided by one plus n square into. Uh, when you substitute x is equal to two pi, here it is sine two n pi minus n into cos two n pi, right? Minus. We are now taking the lower limit e x is equal to zero. See here also we are substituting the limits, not only in this square bracket. So when you take x is equal to zero, e power zero becomes one divided by one plus n square into uh, what happens to this? You see sine zero minus n into cos zero. Right. Uh, let us simplify this. It is equals to one by pi into uh, what terms you'll get there? E to the power of two pi divided by one plus n square into uh, what about these values? You see, sine two n pi is zero minus n into cos two n pi is one. So the first term here is zero, and the last one here is one. What remains? Zero minus n into one, which is minus n, right? So I'm writing that minus n only. The remaining, you know, you can understand. The first term is zero, and this cos two n pi value is simply one. Fine. Look at the second term. You know, minus one by one plus n square into uh, what terms you'll get here? Sine zero is again zero, and cos zero is again one. Right? Zero minus n into one. So it is also simply minus n only. We'll get only this much. Now see, can we take anything common from them? 
we can clearly take you know one by one plus n square even minus n also minus n by one plus n square common from these two terms. So it is equals to one by pi into minus n divided by one plus n square. If you take this common from them, what remains there? You see e to the power of two pi minus one. So this is the value of b n. Therefore, we got all the three coefficients right. Let me substitute everything into the formula. Therefore, the Fourier series. of f of x is equals to e power x is uh, e power x is equals to uh, what shall we see first of all a naught by 2 1 by 2 into how much is a naught we got it as this much you see 1 by pi into e power 2 pi minus 1 i'm just substituting that 1 by 2 into uh, we had uh, 1 by pi into e to the power of 2 pi minus 1 otherwise let me write it like this just to save some of the space here e to the power of 2 pi minus 1 divided by pi. So it is a naught by 2 plus summation uh, an into cos n x. See how much we got a n. A n is you see this one e power 2 pi minus 1 by pi into this 1 plus 1 by I mean 1 by 1 plus n square. I'm writing it like this you see 1 divided by 1 plus n square into e to the power of 2 pi minus 1 divided by pi. This is all a n into cos n x then plus uh, how much we got b and you see i'm just using that plus minus n by 1 plus n square into the same thing you know e to the power of 2 pi minus 1 divided by pi this multiplied by sin n x right uh, look at all the terms here there is something common in every term which is e to the power of 2 pi minus 1 divided by pi. This term we have in a naught, in a n, and of course even in b n also. And this term is absolutely independent of n. There is no n involved in this. So we can just take uh, uh, this particular term common from everything. right? Even from summation also you can take it out because it has no n. right? So keeping that idea in mind, I am just taking this e to the power of 2 pi minus 1 by pi as common from everything so that we'll get it like this you see e to the power of 2 pi minus 1 divided by pi when i bring it out we have only 1 by 2 here plus summation we have only 1 by 1 plus n square into cos n x and see here we have taken this one also common and here you have actually minus n you know minus into this plus it becomes minus i'm taking a square bracket here minus n divided by 1 plus n square into sin n x. See, this is the Fourier series expansion of e power x in the interval 0 to 2 pi. See, for the same function e power x, if you evaluate uh, the Fourier series in the other interval, minus pi to pi, you may get it in a different way. The Fourier series is different for different intervals. Of course, this function may be same, but still we'll get the Fourier series in completely a different way, right? So that's how you can calculate the Fourier series expansion in a two pi length interval, fine?